Hi, David Vizard here, and you are watching Power Tech 10. Give me a few moments of your time, and I will give you the benefit of 60 years of race winning engine building. In this episode uh, 41, we are going to uh, go into part three of our what's new for 82. And this section of the uh, series is going to look at what we're going to learn or can potentially learn about cranks, rods, pistons and blocks. One of our projects, which you see behind me here, is a 396 small block Chevy build that my good friend and Caribbean crew chief and most winning Caribbean race car driver, Mervyn Bonnet, is going to tackle. And uh, that project will start shortly. And his first job is to go through what it requires to build a 396. How many of you are small block Windsor Ford fans? Probably quite a lot. One of the frustrating things about these engines, especially the 302, is they're capable, easily capable, of far more horsepower than the stock block will hold. Well, here's some good news. I'm working with Checkered Flag uh, on this and right now I'm looking at a block here, a small block Ford block, factory originated that will go a thousand horsepower for probably two seasons on the drag strip. So I'm sure you don't want to miss that. Just thought of another couple of projects here. The 1000 horsepower block I told you about is destined to be turbo, twin turbos. We're not going to turbo it just for maximum horsepower. We're going to use everything that I learned doing turbo motors for Chrysler to make a drivable one. That means maximum low speed torque, right? The engine's got to pull seamlessly from a 1000 RPM up. And there's a lot of tricks that can be done on that, but that block is going to be key to that. Another project we've got going is a 525 inch big block. Again, we're doing this for checkered uh, uh, motorsport, and the block has been reinforced, and our target is to see if we can get to 2,000 horsepower on a nitrous build. We'll see how that works out. I was complaining to one of my friends, championship winner, as it happens, um, did most of his own work, had a good sponsor, a and Records, and um, uh, a good team manager. Anyway, we were talking about the use of secondhand parts and things like this, and I said to him, almost every time I installed a used part, it seemed to end up with problems, right? I said, other guys seem to get away with it, but I don't. And he looked at me and he said, well, the reason for that is very simple. And I said, well, it's eluding me. And he said, your engines make much more power than theirs does. 
So any parts that aren't up to scratch break easier. And I said, you know, I never thought of that, right? But that, that seems to be the case. So uh, anyway, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be looking at uh, the possibility of getting good used parts and then not using them at their limit. And I'm going to have one of my friends over who buys most of his speed equipment from eBay. And it's ex-cup car stuff in the main. And he does very well with this. He's built himself an 850 horsepower 421 small block Chevy. Right? That's not too shabby. And I think he's only got about eight grand in it. Not too bad at all. The other thing is, is that uh, balancing needs to be gone into in much more detail. So many cranks are badly balanced and unfortunately the end user doesn't know any different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look into how a crank can be balanced to actually deliver more power. I know that most uh, shops say, well, have it balanced, it's worth at least five horsepower. The truth of the matter is it'd have to be hugely out of balance to be worth five horsepower the way most shops have balanced them. Now, the way I'm going to show you how to balance a crank, it is easy to be worth five horsepower more, and you'll see why. The only trouble is, it is not cheap. Our new team member, Dave McLean, has also got some projects lined up. The first one he's going to do is to finish off the cocktail engine that we started. My, uh, in quotes, apprentice, uh, Phil, you've probably seen him in some of the Ford videos that we've done, just had too many family commitments to be able to continue the 50 mile drive from his house to here. Apart from that, he's putting together his own workshop, but I'll give you news of that down the road. Anyway, let me hand you over to uh, Dave McLean and he'll tell you what we've got going on here uh, as far as the cocktail engine is concerned and a big inch uh, small, blo small block Ford right stroker. So here's Dave. Whenever we build a performance engine we try to do what we can to make sure that all the parts we use are the same as much as possible. The same length rods, the same pistons, the same cam lobes, the same valves, all these things. But what if we have a bunch of good used parts, ones that are perfectly fine, but they're not all the same? How much difference does it really make in horsepower? We're gonna find out. We've got a name for this build, the cocktail motor. Aerodynamic losses in the crankcase are very often talked about, but it's nearly always in terms of pans. How to uh, move the oil out of the way of the crank and cut viscous windage losses uh, by ridding the pan of the most oil possible or getting it away from the crank. But there are some modifications which uh, we're going to show you and um, uh, one of them is very rarely talked about and in fact I have never seen it talked about other than from one person and that one person was the particular individual that passed it on to me. Uh, this was one of my students from way back over 30 years ago and um, He's heavy into uh, British Leyland A-series engines. Uh, that's the original mini engine. And uh, pretty much every time he builds an engine for a customer, and he's not cheap. But that engine cleans up and takes a championship. The last mini engine he did uh, was um, out of 200 points, he scored 199. And that was because it set the track record, or rather it set fastest time of day, pole position, and won the race. 
But the one point that they didn't get was when it burnt a plug cable. And instead of being on pole position, it was second. Another thing that we're going to do is show you the results of extensive tests on total seal rings. And talking of rings, we're also going to show something that we teach in our school here. So only a select few know this, and that is how to run nine thousandths ring gap with a one piece ring. Don't expect to get this stuff from pro stop guys or cup car guys because they don't know how to do it. Something else that we're going to uh, uh, dig into in depth here are um, computer programs. So let me just introduce my uh, co-conspirator on that, uh, Stan Wise. Here's Stan. Hello, David. I'd like to say hi to you and all of your viewers. Please remember to tell them about the new spring selection program that we're going to be debuting and also the new enhancements to the IOP program. Our first move here is we have overhauled our cylinder head program and what we've decided here is that we will sell this program for a relatively small fee and run a um, training video on our program so that when you get this program you will be up to speed on how to use it and all the different things it contains. That about does it for this edition of Paratech 10. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and notify. That will help us as much as it helps you. Just remember, if you want to go fast, help us to help you go fast. Thank you for watching.